I'm going to demonstrate for you an IBM 5181 compact printer talking to a computer through an RS-232 breakout box. Uh, it was interesting enough to me when I was getting it to work, so I figured I'd make a short video out of it. Uh, I'm not known for my advanced production skills, so forgive me if this isn't perfectly polished, but you'll probably survive it. Um, what we have in front here is an IBM 5181 compact printer introduced in 1983 or 1984. It's a small thermal printer that prints on fax paper. The connection to the computer is through a serial interface. Uh, these printers were sold with a PC Junior specific connector, kind of like what you see on the end of this cable adapter here, um, but you could attach them to a normal RS-232 connector with an adapter cable. Sometimes you also see these printers adapted for other computers, such as the Commodore 64. The electronics of the printer are driven by a Hitachi HD6801 V5P, which is a small microcontroller running at 1.25 MHz. The firmware has to fit within the 4K ROM space on the microcontroller, and it has exactly 128 bytes of RAM to work with. This is not a fast printer. The computer sends data to it at 1200 bits per second, which works out to 120 characters per second. While that sounds fast, the print mechanism is far slower. I really can't explain why, but I like these little printers, so please don't hold that against me. This particular printer came to me with a DB25 connector on it, and it was wired as data terminal equipment, abbreviated as DTE. For those of you who don't natively speak RS-232, that means it was masquerading as a computer and not a printer. I've replaced the connector with the correct female connector, wired as DCE, data communications equipment, and now I want to show you how the wiring works to control the printer. RS-232 is an old interface, it goes back a few decades, and sends data in a serial data stream one bit at a time. The key parts, are two oh, excuse me, the key parts of the standard are two wires for transmitting data, one in each direction, and a set of wires for handshaking and status. Older computers used a 25-pin connector, but most of those pins were unused. Today, if you see a serial port, it is probably using a smaller 9-pin connector. One of the problems of RS-232 is that there were a lot of variations on how many pins were present and how they were actually used. The variations can make it difficult to get two pieces of equipment talking to each other. One of the tools that makes debugging easier is known as a breakout box. Let me give you a little pan over to the breakout box and show it to you. There we have our breakout box. Let's see, okay, here we go. Using the lights on the breakout box, you can figure out why two devices might be having problems handshaking. You can also correct wiring problems by using the switches on the breakout box to open individual wires and then using jumpers to reroute signals as needed. Here I have a breakout box connected between the computer on this side and the printer on the other side. And using the lights on the breakout box, we can see exactly how the data transmission and the handshaking between the two work. Although RS-232 uses nine pins, you can get by with far less. Uh, this particular printer uses just three pins to do its work. Let's come back to the printer here in a minute. One pin is used to receive data. One pin is used to tell the computer that it needs to pause. And the last pin is used to tell, uh, is just a signal return. That's almost in focus. Okay. Uh, to make it look like the printer actually implements the full specification, the connector on the printer cable loops the data terminal ready pin from the computer back onto itself use on the data set ready pin, which effectively fools the computer into thinking that the printer is always present. Now, that trick is done inside the connector. It's hidden in there little loopback wires. I should really open up the connector and show you, but I'm sure you can imagine it. Uh, the connector also loops back to request a send signal onto the carrier detect signal, which is basically the equivalent of throwing away request to send. The printer won't see it, and carrier detect isn't used for printers. Uh, before I start turning on equipment, let me explain the lights on the box. Uh, you can see there's 25 red and green lights on each side of the connection. A red light means a signal is being asserted, or it's true, 
while green light means the signal is not being asserted or it's false. For data transmission, you'll see pin 2, uh, the green light and red light blinking on and off, depending upon, you know, is it a 0 or 1 being sent. When the printer is ready to receive data, it tells the computer by setting the clear send pin, which is pin 5 on the printer side. Uh, if I turn on the printer, you'll get to see the light go from green to red. Green meaning the signal is not being asserted, while red means the signal is being asserted. So, double check the focus here first. And I'm going to turn on the printer. Okay, you'll notice it started red, went to green while the carriage was returning, and went back to red. So that means the printer is ready to receive data from the computer. I'm going to turn on the computer. It's going to take a few moments to boot. While we're waiting for that, I might as well entertain you with the computer. It's my beloved PC Junior. This one has a Junior IDE side card. Hard drive is clearly visible on the right side there. Uh, and some new cartridge toys. One of these is a game, and the other is the SD Cart Junior, which is basically a virtual hard drive on a cartridge. An amazing piece of technology. Okay, so you let the machine boot up. We'll take another moment. Let's get the serial, the breakout box ready to go again. Breakout box is a wonderful, wonderful tool. Okay, so. Uh, if the computer sends too much data to the printer, what's going to happen is that the clear to send light, which you see on pin 5, is going to turn off, right? That printer will turn that off to signal to the computer, hey, I need to catch up. When the printer is done doing whatever it needs to do, it'll turn the light back on, and then the computer will be free to send data. So let's demonstrate this with a real print job. Uh, I'm going to take an old run length encoded picture of a pagoda that I downloaded from a BBS years ago. I have a program that converts that picture into the printer escape codes. And I'm just going to take those printer escape codes and through the magic of file copy, dump it straight onto the printer. So that's the sound of a Model F, if you're not familiar. Press enter. Now we hear the printer. I think the lights are blinking a little too fast to see the data and transmit going. You can see some movement. The clear to send though is clearly happening, you know, synchronized with the carriage return. And meanwhile, the computer or the printer is busy making this pattern. A run length encoded graphic from 30, 35 years ago, probably downloaded from a BBS, probably originating from CompuServer or a service like that. This is my standard print file. I will use this to test a printer. Back to the breakout box. Still behaving as expected. You can see each time that the printer head needs to return to the left side of the printer, the printer turns off clear to send, pausing the data transmission. This is known as hardware flow control. Software flow control is when you use, or the signal to start or stop is embedded inside the data stream. Uh, you may have used software flow control if you've ever used a Unix style terminal and used control S control Q to pause and restart the output on the terminal. Let's do one more print job. Uh, this is a fairly small JPEG that I've run through a conversion program. 
which converts it first to grayscale and then dithers it using the Floyd Steinberg algorithm. All right. Back over to the printer. Let's advance the paper a little bit so we don't have a jam. And let's copy the next file over. As I said, fairly slow. Of course, the breakout box is beautifully showing us what's happening, or in this case, what's happening very slowly. Oh, and we're done. And now you notice if I turn, or I'll advance the paper a little bit, turn the printer off, and the clear sunlight should eventually die out. Slowly, but it's gone. And now to look and finally see what we printed. Yeah, my hand is getting in the way, but you get the idea. Not bad for a 35-year-old printer. Hope you've enjoyed watching the blinky lights, and uh, if you see one of these in the wild, definitely give it a good home. On that note, it's been fun. Hope you enjoyed it. Take care.